classic example, SATs. All right, what's the SATs out of nowadays? 1,600 now? Are they still at 2,400? 1,600, okay. And I don't need, I just want to show you how the curve works. Let's say uh, for 2016, they took all the SAT scores for everyone who took it in the US, all the students, and they did the mean of it, and they found the mean to be, oh boy, I, 1250, too high, probably too high, right? 1,000, right, I'm just gonna go 1,000, make it easier, right? okay? And they calculated the standard deviation, just like you guys do. They just have one long list, they went to one var stats, and they saw the standard deviation was, I, I'm gonna guess here, 200, okay? What did we do yesterday to find the number that was one above the mean, or one standard deviation above the mean? What did we do with the mean and the standard deviation to find what it would be one above? We did what to the two numbers? Added them. So one standard deviation above the mean would be a score of 1,200. What would be one below the mean? What did we do to the mean and the standard deviation yesterday? We subtracted them. So one below the mean would be 800. Let me show you how these percents work now. If I had you guys take your calculators out and add up all the percents underneath that curve, they'd add up to 100, okay? Add up to 100 with the halfway point right here at zero. So guess what all these percents add up to the left? 50, 50 to the right. Here's what this curve means. Let's say you scored a 1,200 on there. Not bad, right? You scored a 1,200. You're right here with your score. You guys told me, what do all these percents add up to be to get to zero? 50, right? Okay, plus, everyone go ahead and get the calcs out now. So right now you're at 50% at zero, plus 19.1, plus, I can't read that, 15.9. 0, 0.0, 15. So what's the 50 plus those two extra added on? What does it tell you? Megan, what's it tell you? 84.1. This is what it says. If you scored a 1,200 on the SATs, 84.1% of the students who took it scored below you. It's not bad, right? All right, that's not bad at all. Versus, ready? Let's say you scored an 800. Let's say you scored an 800 now. Starting at the left-hand side, what do all those percents add up to, up to 800? Go ahead, try it out real quick. What do all those scores add up to? What do all the percents add up to? Just asking for one, two, three, four, five numbers to be added up. What's it end up adding up to? Just from the left now, from the left all the way to 800, negative one. What do those scores add up to? Are we all right? Am I saying something incorrect? Or All you guys are adding up 0 0.1, 0 0.5, 1.7, 4.5, and 9.2. What do they add up to? Matt, help. 15.9%. So what's that mean? If you scored an 800, only 15.9% of the kids scored below you. All right? So the higher you are on this curve going to the right, the better off you were. Okay? Anybody ever get those reports back? I don't know if they still do it in elementary school where you take the tests and you get a letter back in the mail saying you scored in the 70th percentile. That's where they get it from, or these curves. 70% of the kids who took it scored at or below you. All right? So what I want to do now is I'll give you a scenario now. You find me the percents now. You find me the percents. So let me get rid of all this. Can I take those away? Nope, I didn't think so. All right, so first one up here. Set of measures follows a bell curve. That's why we're using that curve right there called the normal curve. It follows a bell curve. Mean of 80. Where's the mean go? At zero. So at zero, I'm going to put 80. Okay, so I'm going to put 80 at zero and a standard deviation of five. So let me put my 80 in at zero. A standard deviation of five. So how do I find the score at one above? 
What do I do with 85 if I want to find the score of one above? I'm going to add it together. So what's the score at one above the mean? 85. And what if I wanted the one below the mean now? I subtract 5 from 80 and get 70. 5. What's the question asking? What's the percent that fall between 75 and 80? So it's your job right now to add up those percents that are from 75 to 80. Just the ones from 75 to 80. Okay, here we go. What two percents are you adding up? Here we go. 16. What two percents are you adding up? Yep. 15 plus 19.1. So, Brooke, how many, what percent of fall between 75 and 80? 34.1% of the scores fall between 75 and 80. Can we see where we got that from? Where are these numbers from? Numbers come from. The mean is always at zero. One above, I add the standard deviation. One below, I subtract. Will we ever deal with the halves? Probably not, but let's think about it. What do you, how do you think I would get from zero to a half in this problem? Don't add five, but add 2.5. Yes, you guys got it already. Okay. One more. Set of scores follows a oh, hey, normal distribution, which means normal curve. I'm using the curve. Okay. Mean of 50, standard deviation of 7. Find me the percent that go from 36 to 64 now. Okay, put that mean where it should go. Put the 50 where it should go, right at zero. What's one above now? What's the score at one above? 57, but that's not good enough. I can't stop there because I needed to get to 64. So add seven again. And that'll give you a score of 64 at two above. Because we go, always go by full standard deviations, not halves. Okay, so I got to 64. Let's go below now. What are you doing the mean to get below? Here we go. Here we go. 18. What are you doing to the 50 to get one below? Go ahead, subtract 7. What do you have? 43. That I needed 36, though. So let's go two below. What are you going to say? Subtract another 7 and get 36. Yep. Okay. You guys got some adding to do. From 36 to 64. What do you guys, what do we end up with when we add all these up here? Here we go. Two, what do we end up with? Beautiful, 95.4%. Questions? Know that number right there, 95.4. That was from what? Negative two to positive two. So 95.4%, make sure you make a note. That is within how many standard deviations? What did we go out to? What did we go out to? Two. So 95.4% will always be if it's within two standard deviations. You are going to see that number over and over again, 95.4. It's going to signal you, oh, I'm at negative two to two on the curve within two standard deviations. What I would like you to do in your group right now, because there's another number you should be aware of, the one that represents within one standard deviation of the mean. I want you and your group to figure out that percent right now within one standard deviation. 
and compare notes right now. Compare notes when you find it, make sure you got the correct one. So what number would represent within one standard deviation? Hopefully you start to see it repeats itself, the curve. Okay, what number, what percent are you guys coming up with? Here we go, one, what number are we coming up with? 68.2, good man, 68.2%. We are gonna see both these percents very often and we gotta know, oh, that's within two, that's within one, from negative one to one. Okay, guys, uh, you guys are doing real well with this, but unfortunately, I got some uh, really, really bad news. That look familiar to anybody? What is that? It's a reference sheet. Same one you guys are going to get in the Regents exam in about six to seven weeks. Does anybody see what is not on that reference sheet that we've been using the last two problems? Yeah, the curve's not on there, is it? And it won't be on there magically in January. And you're darn right, I'm not going to have you guys memorize the curve and its percents. So how the heck do I do these problems without the access of the curve? The answer? Everyone's calculator is programmed with the curve in it already. So from now on, we are going to be doing these problems right in your calculator. Because your calculator has a curve in it already. You just don't know where it is. Okay, sorry. So here we go. How do I do these on the calculator without the curve anymore? All right, take a look at this next one. 120 students, the score is approximated. Normal distribution, then I, I start thinking curve. When I see normal distribution, I just start thinking the curve. Okay, whoa, whoa. mean of 72, standard deviation of seven. Okay, we, if I had the curve, we'd know how to do this. What percent of scores were 65 or higher? So we need 65 or more, right? 65 or more. Everyone ready to go to the calculator? Okay, here is where we can access the curve. You're not, by the way, you're not gonna see a picture of the curve or anything. Hopefully that didn't dash your dreams right there. You go to the curve here. We have been living in the stat button all unit, but not anymore. We are gonna be, everyone has a VARS button. And you see D-I-S-T-R right above it? I need that. So second VARS. And the first two choices are normal PDF and normal CDF. We will always be at normal CDF when we need access to the curve. So everyone, please choose normal CDF. Then you are asked to plug in four numbers. I'll do it as I go along. Four numbers, a lower number, a higher number, upper number. This right here, this little U, that's new to us, that's the mean. And this one should not be new to us, that's the what? We talked about it yesterday. It was on your one VAR screen. It just doesn't have an X with it. What do we do have? Population, yes, population. Looks like I need to get this bad boy out because we're going back to our old ways, some of us. So help me out with the numbers. This is your lower and your upper. What did I need? 65 and greater. So guess which one's going to be my lower number? 65, you're darn right. So let's go back. 65. Here's where it gets nuts. My upper number, it said 65 or higher. It didn't tell me where to stop. It said just keep going higher. So what we need to tell the calculator is go to infinity. Here's how we could put in infinity. Infinity. One. And everyone should have above your comma button a double E. Second comma. Even I, I this is that drives me nuts that it's double E on the calculator, but then comes up just E, but whatever. I'll deal with it. 99. 
scientific notation. That's the highest number we can put in there. Next, what was our mean? What was the mean in this problem? It was given 70 with a standard deviation of 72. One job. Let's go. With a standard deviation of 7. Paste it in. Why? Okay. You guys have it there. Just give me a second. Okay, everyone see what's on the screen now? Don't touch a thing. That's, when, you, when I say show work, that's the work I want down. On your paper, that's what you can show me when you show work for these type of problems. Because everything's done in the calculator. So I just don't want an answer. I want that as showing work. All right, so that's what I want written down from now on if you use your calculator for the curve. So it's exactly what I want there. Normal CDF. I have 65, 1E99. I have, what do we have again? 72.7. There's your work right there, guys, for these problems. That's what I'm looking for. Okay. Go back to the calc. Now you can press enter. But your calculator will not produce a percent. It'll produce it as a decimal instead. Okay, so that's your percent, but as a decimal. So if you do want a percent, what can you simply do? Multiply the darn thing by 100. And it comes out to be about 84%. All right. So that's where we're going to live on their second VARS normal CDF. Any questions? Because now I'm just going to flip it now. High school, we took the SAT exams. Perfect. Uh, normally distributed. There it is. Curve time. It gives you the mean. Gives you the standard deviation. We got Big Sue here. She scored a 740. What percent of students scored below her? So what are we looking for? 740 or, in this case, seven, all the scores 740 and below now. All right, so I got to show you something new on the calc. So let's go to CDF, normal CDF, if you're not there already. Second bars, normal CDF. Okay, now we got a problem. What's that 470, 740 for us? That's my upper bound, right? So 740 is going to be upper. 740 and below, below. It doesn't give me an ending point for below. So what I need to do is something similar I did for upper, but instead of one, negative one E99. All right, so that lower now is going to be negative one E99. So the upper would be one E99, lower if you needed it, negative one E99. 740, right? No, what, what was the mean? Sorry. Was it 540? And a standard deviation of 80. Again, paste it in. There's your work right there. There's your work. And then go ahead, enter. Whew, Sue is a beast, huh? Because as a percent, how many percent of people scored below her? About 99. I'll go nearest tenth here, about 99.4%. Whew. She is not joking around. Coming strong. Pretty weak, though, if the mean is 450 at the high school, huh? It's a pretty weak class. Other anything else? 
All right, here we go. I want you and your group right now. Just don't answer the question because now it's how many would be expected to be less than 11 one point ounce. Find the percent that'll be less than 11.1 ounces for me. Okay, so in your group right now, we know they're normally distributed, so you can go to normal CDF. Find the percent of cans that'll weigh less than, so less than 11.1. Everything less than 11.1. Go ahead, just find the percent and we'll talk about how in the world to use it. And we'll just take that, give me that percent if you get called on, give me that percent about to the nearest tenth. All right, that are below 11.1. Okay, do you have that percent for me in the nearest 10? Nope. Great. Luke is calling somebody. Let's go. You were last one up. About 6.7%, right? That's the percent. We want to know how many cans, though. How many cans did they pick out? So I need to know from you guys what's 6.7% 6 6 of... 250. And I was shocked third period at the amount of people who did not know how to find 6.7% of 250. But change that back into a decimal or use the decimal that's on your calculator now times 250. So we're looking at about, did it come up yet? Cooper, pick somebody. Let's go. About 17 cans. Yep. How are we feeling with the normal CDF? We good using it, especially with the infinity and negative infinity. Here's where I want to go with you right now on this next one. How about I give you the percent now? Instead of you guys producing the percent, I'll give you the percent. Can you find me the high and the low? All right, I'll give you the percent. Can you guys find the high, bless you, high and low for me? Normal distributed, so I know I've got a curve, right? Got it. Got the mean, got a standard deviation. Now, do you see I give you the percent? And I want to know what interval does that percent come from? Don't need it. Don't need it this time because I told you that number was coming up again. Where did that number come up? 95.4. Within two. Can you guys find me? You guys know 95% comes from negative two to positive two. Can you, given these two pieces of information, the five and the 56, can you find me the scores at two and negative two? Well, where's the mean go? And the middle, zero. So at zero, you got 56. Help me get to two, help me get to negative two. I'm not gonna, I know you guys could skip ahead, but I'm not. How do I get to positive one? From 56, what do I do to 56 to get to one above the mean? Anything yet? Nope, here we go. Vinny, need somebody, let's go. You add five, so what do I have at positive one? 61, need someone, Brianne. 
What do I do to the 61 to get to 2? Go ahead. Okay. So I know my high, my upper is going to be 66. Got to get to the lower now. What do I do with 56 to get to negative 1? Need somebody, Braden. Go. Need somebody. What do I do with that 51 to get to negative 2? Go. Forty-six, good. So everyone see the interval? That wasn't that bad. Forty-six to sixty-six. Because you knew that ninety-five point four. Hey, what if I went sixty-eight point two? What would be my interval if I want to know sixty-eight point two percent of the scores? Fifty-one to sixty-one. Okay, that's the only two I need you to know. Anything else here before we end this bad boy? Let's do it. I'm going to perform a little magic at the end, too. All right, I know you can't wait. 20 high school students, here's the scores. Perfect. Determine what percent of the scores within one. Now, some of you may see this within one, and you're like, oh, hey, you taught me that at the beginning of the class, 68.2. I'm done with the problem. Let's move on. Yeah, that's true. The 68.2 is true. If these scores are normally distributed, did we mention if they were or not? No, so we're not assuming they are. So we got to do this problem very similar to the way we did at the end of class yesterday. I need to know the percent of scores that fall within one of the mean. So the first thing we need to find is what's the darn mean? And this is great review for tomorrow. Somebody explain to me, totally new kid in the class. How do I get that value on my calculator? These numbers all have to go where first? Into a list. Yep. So let's go ahead. Be careful, be careful, be careful. You guys type like you text, and there's no autocorrect, remember. Oh, look at that music to my ears, all those button pressing. You guys should be on L21 when you're done. All right, at the bottom of your list, it should say L21. That means you put in 20 scores. And then if you remember how to get to find the mean, this is what I'm going to ask for part of tomorrow's quiz. Get to the mean screen. Stat calculate, one bar stats. How many lists did you guys just put these numbers in? One. So when you go to that calculate screen, L1 should be the only thing showing. Get L2 out of there. You didn't put anything in L2. So it just should show L1. And then calculate, and I'll ask somebody in a second what the mean is. Everyone ready for the mean? Alex, need somebody. You were last. You got a mean for me there, Brooke? Pressure's on. She came through. That's clutch right there, boys and girls. That's called clutch. 79.7. There's the mean. What do I need to do to it, though, to get to one above and one below? What other value do I need? Standard deviation. And it doesn't say population or sample, so I'm going to assume population. So just give me nearest tenth now. What's your population standard deviation? Brooke? No, not from you. Call on somebody. 
about 8.7, yep. So to the mean, I'm going to add 8.7, and I'm going to subtract it to get those values. So Emma, call on somebody so they can tell me the range of values within one. So anywhere, any score from 71, sorry, Ray, what was the other one, 88 point? Yep. Any score from 71 to 88.4 will be considered within one standard deviation. We have to find what percent of these scores. So let's find out how many fall in there. Ready? Do I, do I, I don't want to do this. I found, feel like I'm in elementary school. 70, 60, do we want to say yes or no? Clap, cheer, boo, I don't know what you want to do here. 70 good? No. 60? 75? Okay, this is painful right now. I'm not going to lie. All right, it's painful. You ready for my magic trick? Wouldn't it be nice if these were already in order and I could just go boom, 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 I'm done? Wouldn't that be nice? Well, guess what? Your calculator could put these numbers in order for you. All right? Everyone go, ready? Here's how you can put numbers in a list in any order you'd like. So go back to your calculator, hit stat. Everyone see choices two and three, sort. Sort A means ascending, that means bottom to top, or lowest to highest. Descending, which would mean highest to lowest. What do you guys wanna go? I don't care. Lowest to highest or highest to lowest? Lowest to highest, there we go. So we get ascending, so sort. Now you got to tell it what list to sort. All of us had it in list one. Remember, that's right above your one button. So sort L1. This is the best part right here. Calculator tells you, I'm done. It's done already. Go back to your list now. Stat edit. What? Look at the magic. Beautiful, isn't it? All in order for you. Easily now, please count the scores from 71 to 88.4 and tell me how many you have. All right, easily now, instead of trying to go through each one single and say good, no, good, no. God, that's magic. Reagan, you just went. Can you find me somebody who's going to tell me how many scores are in my interval? 14. I need a percent, so 14 out of what, Annika? How many did you put in? It's at the top of the problem, don't count. 20, you get a 14 out of 20 on the test. As a percent, we're getting 70%. Okay, it's a nice little feature of the sort. You like that, Matt? It is, you show that to everyone now. Because not too many people know about it. It's a little hidden feature I just told you guys. Keep it under wraps. At least get that first problem done before you leave on the homework assignment for me. At least get that first problem done using your calculator normal CDF.